frustrated. Everybody has interest in your womb. But we're going to learn something powerful from this awesome woman. When you come into such difficulty, such problem, when you now go through what I call the mystery of unanswered prayer, there are, there are problems that are prayer resistant. The more you pray, the more they mock you. But tonight, I'll show you a way out of such problems. Yeah. Read on. What happened? Let's begin from verse 5. But unto Hannah, she gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. I hope you have taken note of that wonderful line. God, not, not even human beings, and her has shut up her womb. And her adversary also put her adversary up just her means um, her mate, the husband's second wife. Read on. For to make her fret, because the, the Lord her has mate, shut up her, her mate took interest in provoking her to anger. And I want you to hear me. There are people who mock you, and laugh at you, and ridicule you. For no good reason except to make you unhappy. Don't run to a native doctor. Run to God. Don't become depressed. Run to God. Remember that problem is what? A choice. Only you can choose what a problem will do for you. Number two. Problem is an angel wearing a wrong dress. Number three. Your problem can be your wings that will cause you to fly through the world. Your problem can also crush you. Only you will decide. Don't let your problem make you a wheelbarrow. You know, a wheelbarrow does not move unless the man who is pushing it moves. You can choose what your problem will do for you. This night I want to declare that your problem shall be your promotion. Raise your hand and say, my problem shall be my promotion. My shall be my promotion. Yeah. Read on. And as, she, and as he did so year, year by after year, year, when she went up to the house, house of, of the, the Lord, Lord, so she provoked, she, provoked her. she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Wait, we are going to see what she did. Number one. She fasted her prayer. I don't know anybody here who is facing great crisis in your life. Anybody who has an obstacle that would not be turned into miracles. You can fast your prayer. You can say to God from now till next week Wednesday I will not eat. I want you to turn my night into midday. I want you to turn my lamentation into laughter. Men and brethren, fasting is awesome. Fasting can take you into God's bedroom and have God discuss intimate things with you. Fasting can remove your problems layer after layer. Problems can cause God to step into your situation. And cause miracles to happen. Men and brethren, Jesus said there are some demons that cannot just go out on their own except through fasting. Let's see the book of Matthew 17 21. Matthew 17 21. What does it say? Anybody? Let's be fast. Matthew 17 21. Anybody? How be it? This, this kind, kind goeth, goeth not, not out by prayer. There are demons that cannot leave you except by prayer and fasting. There are problems that cannot be solved except prayer and fasting. But let me quickly add, most of the promises God had made to us must be fought for. If God says, I'll make you fruitful, and the enemy blocks you away, you can fight back by declaring a fast over that problem. If God had promised to prosper you, if God had promised to 
give you a good wife, a good husband, great children, and they are not forthcoming, you can declare fast. And hear me, there are not many demons that can resist fasting prayer. In fact, fasting is one of the prayer boosters that can boost your prayer. When I began my ministry, I was more of a village preacher. From Ekoradaidem to Nkek to Geb to Itigidi to Ediba to Akparabon to Akunakuna to Bendegayo to Bansang to Kaku to Kede. Do you know where those places are? <laughs> Anybody from Boki here? Anybody from uh, Bobra here, you should know. And I began to fast and say to God, can I please preach all over the world? And now I have traveled so much that sometimes I said to God, can I rest from traveling? I don't know what the enemy has used to block your progress. You can fight back. Raise your hand and tell me I shall fight back. I shall fight back. Maybe you're a girl and you're already 38, not yet married. You can stop that. You can stop that. There's a way you pray. Within one week, a girl will propose to you. I mean, a man will propose to you. Not just a man. A man that has great future. A man that has tomorrow. A man who is humble and caring and tender and loving and gentle and sensitive and humorous. A man who can make you laugh five times a day. Every girl needs a man who can make her laugh five times a day. You remain young. You hardly age. Your blood pressure will remain low. A sister came to me and complained about her failure to find a husband. She said, I gave my life to Christ 10 years ago when you preached. And if I don't get married this year, I'll commit fornication. You can suspend me if you like. And I said to her, you don't know how to pray. I'm going to pray for you now. Within one month, a man shall propose to you. She said to me, if anybody proposes to me, I'll give you a goat. No, I'll give you a crate of salt drinks and a goat. After two weeks, somebody proposed to her. She returned to me and said, the man who proposed to me is two years younger. Sister, we didn't discuss the man's age. Can I have my goats and my soft drinks? I would like you to try it. Do you know for 15 years, I used to fast every month, I mean one month in every four months. Until 1986, God said to me, Mama, stop this long fast. I will honor your every prayer and I'll give you 100 angels to accompany you everywhere you go. When you pray, I shall be there. When you hold a meeting, I shall be there with 100 angels. I want you to make up your mind tonight to be mighty in prayer. Can somebody say, I shall be mighty in prayer? I shall be mighty in prayer. Remember, as you're speaking now, Satan is also planning to stop you by making you lazy, by making you on this, um, by making you, um, by causing you to have a non committal attitude, by causing you not to be tenacious in your quest for God's presence upon your life. One more time, can you declare and say, what did I say you should say? Can you prophesy over yourself and say, I shall be mighty in prayer? I want you to come to a place where members of your family will be afraid of your prayer. Once you kneel down, they say, hey, hey, stop, stand up, stand up. We have suffered every time you have knelt down. I want you to come to a place where you have power with God, power with men, and power over demons. 
Raise your hand and say, I shall have power with God. I shall have power with men. And I shall have power over demons and principalities. If, if, say, the, say the amen well. Now, I don't know if you know, when you become mighty in prayer, you no longer struggle through life. What we're looking for will come looking for you. Then let's say to God, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Something reasonable in my life. Oh Lord. Mouth must be used either to minister to men or minister to God. Not to gossip. Not to slander. Not to backbite. Watch what your mouth says. Let's go down to verse 11 of chapter 1 of the book of First Samuel. Let's be faster. What did she say to God? Someone help us, help us, we don't have time, help us. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. She vowed the vow. We are back to that word vow. She vowed the vow. And said, I O say, Lord, O Lord, Lord, if thou wilt, if, if thou will give me, look on the affliction. If, if you look, if thou will look, of on my affliction of thine handmaid of thine handmaid and remember me if you remember me wait every time God remembers a man a woman he will turn his or her reproach or shame into blessings Amen. I would like you to ask God tonight to remember you when God remembers you what we are looking for will begin to look for you when God remembers you, your barrenness will become abundant fruitfulness. Yeah. Read on. And not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man child. When then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And Rachel will not touch his head. She was simply saying to God, if you will bless me with a child. I'll give that child back to you and extend my days of barrenness by two more years. And there shall no razor come upon his head. By that statement she was saying the boy shall be a Nazarite, one dedicated unto God. He will not be like other children. But let us move away from uh, vows or covenants or pledges. Let's go to number the third prayer booster, the book of Jude, verse 20. Remember I've said the first one is what? Fasting. Second one is what? Vow. The third one is what? Let's go to Jude chapter, verse, I mean, 20. verse 20. But what ye, a, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Pray in the Holy Ghost. What does it say there? Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of Pray our Lord. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hold the line. Anybody here who has not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'll give you a chance to ask God to grant you that blessing and that gift. When battles get tough, when the enemy blocks every access road against you, when the enemy hedges you in, or hems you in. When you come to a place where you sit by one particular door and cry, and that door remains locked. No matter how long you cry. If you can speak in tongue, you'll be calling for reinforcement. And God will send angels. Because he's a commander in chief. Speaking in tongue is you using your whole telephone line with heaven. 